What's up, movie lovers? I'm Mike, and this is Gotta Love Them Movies. Guys, you guys, welcome back to another uh, edition of Gotta Love Them Movies, your daily dose of movie news. I'm your host, Mr. Mike Brown. I'm here all the time. And you guys, this is not uh, technically our movie show that we do uh, daily or weekly or however you want to quantify that. Uh, this is going to be more of an editorial video. Um, as if you clicked on this video, it probably means you want to know what's on my mind when it is regarding Universal Studios. Um... So, yeah, so uh, my girlfriend Kim and I, we went to Universal Studios last week. Um, we actually went to Florida to go visit her family last week. And while we were there, you know, we we had the opportunity to go to Universal. We thought about it. We talked We talked a lot about it, actually, um, because we both were very um, adamant that we don't want to go if it's not going to be safe. We were very, very adamant. We don't want to go if we can't do it safely. And, you know, we, I feel like we did a really good job of doing our research. Um, we, uh, you know, I watched a lot of YouTube videos before we went and just to see what other YouTubers were doing. Um, like how safe were they? What not safe were they, but like how safe were the parks and the general attitude of people, uh, in the parks and, you know, you know, all the safety precautions and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, I just kind of want to go through a little bit and talk about this. Uh, but before I do, as I do with every video, please hop on over to youtube.com, type in gotta love them movies in the upper right hand corner. You'll see a little red button that says subscribe. Go ahead and click on that button. What clicking on that button does is it helps to widen our subscriber base. But Mike, I'm already watching this on YouTube. Why do I, or maybe on Facebook live, wherever you happen to be watching this. Uh, why do we need to click on the YouTube channel? Well, or the subscribe button. Well, Here's the thing, with more subscribers, we get more watched content on the channel. With more watched content on the channel, I get to, uh, to qualify for ad revenue. And with earning ad revenue, I get to make this show my full-time job. So I'd very much appreciate if you can go over and click on that subscribe button. All right, guys, uh, like I said, um, oh, there's Harry Potter. That was one thing that we did. Here, let me uh, take Harry Potter off the screen. We'll just post Universal right there. Um, so like I said, we went to Universal Studios. Um, we kind of did our homework before we went there. Wanted to, We talked to a lot of people in the in the Florida uh, arena. Um, one guy was from New Jersey. His son was asthmatic. He was like, I am like taking this thing very, very seriously. And he was saying as serious as he takes the pandemic he also felt safe enough to go to Universal Studios. And, you know, he's from New Jersey, but he's a Florida resident now. And he was telling us the whole thing about, like, you know, hand sanitizer and, you know, six foot different distance and everybody's wearing their masks. And so Kim and I felt safe enough that we could go. Um, I made I made a little, uh, like, a one-minute video. I'll share it for you now. Obviously, um, I'm recording this a week after we went. Uh, but this video I recorded in the parks. Um, I was really, really bad at recording videos in the parks because I kind of wanted to do like, hey, so we just did this. Here's here's my thoughts about it. Hey, we just did that. Here are my thoughts about it. When I'm enjoying something, I'm there. I'm in the moment. It's so hard for me to like go and have an experience and enjoy something and then say, stop, hammer time. You know, um, I you know it's hard for me to, to go into work mode and say, okay, well, I need to do uh, an editorial about this experience we just had. Anyway, so here's the video um, of the explanation, kind of the, uh, you'll see. We just got into the parks and this is what I recorded. Okay, guys, so uh, you may have noticed, again, this is a very different video than uh, you may be used to. Um, I've come to Universal Studios here in Orlando um, in a previous video, I was talking about how, like, I'm only going to do this if, if I feel like this is something that I can do safely, um, that isn't going to, like, put us in any kind of, like, compromising position and whatnot. You can actually see my glasses are fogging up right now. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of, like, show you around the park, and I want you to see, like, some of the steps that Universal has taken to kind of ensuring, like, a safe experience. Uh, so far, the lines have been... A little crowded, but they have been pretty good at, you know, spacing people out a little bit. Um, everybody's wearing their masks. 
everybody's wearing their masks. So that's something that I like is super important to me. Um, so far, I've seen a bunch of hand sanitizing stations around. So, um, uh, yeah, we'll just kind of see how the rest of the day goes. Okay, so, so you know, there you go. Like one of the big things that I stressed in this video a lot was how many people were actually wearing their masks. And I cannot understate this. Everybody was wearing their masks. I, uh, maybe not 100%, but 99%. I caught one, maybe two people in, you know, we went to two parks in one day. And I feel like that's a pretty good track record if maybe two people in two parks in our experience because we kind of went back and forth a few times between the parks we really didn't see that many people not wearing their masks um you know like for the mo majority of time people would take their masks off to eat i'm not counting that um but once people were finished eating they put their masks back on they go about to enjoy the parks um universal was very very um open in how strict they are in their mask policy so yes Everybody was wearing their masks. Were people social distancing? Not as much as I would like. Not as much as I would like. Now, I will say that in the lines, and uh, I made kind of a, a small little uh, diagram here. It's a, it's a poor diagram. But um, uh, so the way the lines work, um, if you've ever been in a line for, a, uh, for an amusement park ride, you'll know that you know sometimes the lines zigzag a little bit. And um, you can see kind of, they'll put a six foot marker here and they'll put a six foot marker here and they'll put a six foot marker here. But what happens when you start to get down into this range? Well, what they did was really, really clever. They figured, all right, so here's a six foot marker, here's a six foot marker, here's a six foot marker. By the time you get down on this, um, in this lane, you're not six feet away from the people over here. You're maybe one foot or, you know, two feet away from the people over here. So maybe they won't put any markers on this, in this lane and they'll put another six foot marker here and then six foot marker and six foot marker and so on and so forth. That was brilliant. And when people were abiding by the markers on the ground, everything was fine. No problems whatsoever. But people will be people and they tend to crowd a little bit and, you know, push you forward. And, you know, for the like I said, the most part, for the majority, people were very good about it. People were very good about wearing their masks. People were very good about social distancing. Sometimes you get people, we, we had line cutters just jump in and say, hey, here's a huge gap between this person and this person. Let's just jump right in. It was a whole family. And it was looking at the mom like, really? You're encouraging, really? Come on. It was, that was a little ridiculous. But um, that may have been a one-off incident. That may not have been, I don't know. All I can say is my experience. Um, people didn't social distance as much as I would like them to. So if social distancing is very, very important to you, I would say, you know what, maybe stay away from the parks. If social distancing is very important to me. But I also find myself very regularly in situations where people don't social distance. I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan. People don't social distance very well in Manhattan. I also work on an airplane. And it's very difficult to social distance on an airplane. So I, I have become used to not social distancing. I wish that we would. But I'm very used to the not social distancing. I very much enforce mask wearing whenever I'm on the airplane. Um, I also uh, carry like a little vial of uh, spray alcohol, but like the 99% proof um, industrial grade is isopropyl alcohol. So I just have a little spray bottle, wipe my hands down. Now, one thing I will say about the rides, and here, let me pull up this ride. The first ride that we went to was um, the, the Rip Roaring Ride, Rockin' Roller Coaster. But I, I don't know the name of it. Um, it has music blaring on either side of your head. Um, you're kind of like strapped in. You Whatever. It's, it's a great coaster. I love it. It's, it's really, really fun. Before every single ride, no exceptions, before every single attraction you get into, um, there's there's an attendant spraying uh, or pumping um, hand sanitizer into your hands. So you get on the ride before everybody gets on, anybody gets on the ride. Everybody gets hand sanitizer pumped into their hands. So that was great. Um, next, uh, we went to the, the the Revenge of the Mummy ride. Um, 
And here's the thing. I was very, I was very apprehensive about going into an indoor attraction, right? I was like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't feel safe. It, it's enclosed. People might be screaming. Here's the thing. We, when we were in the parks, we started asking some of the other attendants and, you know, some of the other people who were coming out of the rides, like, how does this work? Did you feel safe? What, what are you doing to keep people safe? And on almost all the rides, they're keeping people spaced out. Now, in a ride like the mummy, you have row one, row two, row three, row four per car. So something that they were doing that I didn't really like all that much is, um, they weren't keep they weren't really keeping people spaced out between rows one and three or you know rows two and four. They were filling up all four rows. One party to a row. So if there's only one, if you're just a single rider, if you're all by yourself, you'll get an entire row to yourself. But there's still gonna be somebody in front of you and still somebody behind you. That I was like, uh, I just, uh. Having said that, the thing that made it tolerable, the thing that I was like, okay, I, I, can, I can get on this ride. I can be okay with this ride. Everybody was wearing their masks, period. You never had an opportunity to take your mask off for really any. There was one ride, and I'll get to this in a little bit, but there was one ride where masks were optional. I was not okay with that. Um... Every single other ride, mandatory, no ifs, ands, or buts, you must wear your mask. And it's not even like, it, you didn't even have the opportunity to take your mask off. It was just, your masks are on, and off the ride goes, right? So, everybody was wearing their masks. Okay, yeah, we're filled up rows one, two, three, and four, but it was only one party to a row. If there's four people in your party, well then, blah, 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 there you go. If there's only two people in your party, Two people per row, right? So that part I was I was pretty impressed with. I liked that. Um, I like that you're not next to people. Yes, you have people in front of you and behind you. Again, everyone's wearing their masks. So this is what I'm saying. Like, there's certain things that they could have improved upon, um, and you know, other things that they were doing very well. After the mummy, we went over to uh, the Jimmy Fallon uh, race through New York ride. Um, that is more of like in a big open air theater. The entire seating theater was on this giant gimbal. So you kind of do this uh, thing as you're watching this giant film in front of you all in 3D. Um, they spaced everybody out. Um, there was, it was big enough that you could leave an entire row uh, empty so that the people in front of you are two rows in front of you. The people behind you are two rows behind you. The people next to you are three empty seats away from you. So it was... Me and Kim, three empty seats, and then the next people there, right? So so that um, Jimmy Fallon race through New York, probably the safest indoor ride that I've seen. It was great. Or rather attraction. It's kind of a ride, I guess. Uh, next, we got on the Hogwarts Express uh, to go to the other park. You know, we walked through... Um, uh, what was it, Diagon Alley and Nocturne Alley? And of course, like th this is that is the uh, the most crowded part of the park. You know, Diagon Alley, Hogsmeade, Nocturne Alley. It's it's Harry Potter land. It's where everybody wants to go. It's where everybody wants to be. Right. It's where all, like the really cool rides are and just the best atmosphere in those parks. But if you want to go between the parks, you have to ride the Hogwarts Express. And this was I was very impressed with this. If you've never been on the Hogwarts Express, it's a it's an actual train that goes from one park to the other. Mm, pardon me. And inside the train, you are assigned to a certain boxcar with a closing door. It's actually a locking door. In an emergency, there's like an emergency switch on the floor that you can open the door and get out if you need to. But, you know, each boxcar closes and kind of locks you inside. And only the people in your party are allowed in that box with you. That I thought was great. Nobody else is around. It's just us. You know, again, like I'm not touching anything. Be a, And that's another thing, you guys. Just be aware of what you touch in general. I'm hyper aware of that. That's why I have my little spray bottle of alcohol so I can constantly wash or like disinfect my hands all the time. 
So yeah, the Hogwarts Express, I was very impressed with. Um, then we got into Hogsmeade. We walked around. Like I said, there was it was packed. There were plenty of people there. Tons of people. So you just kind of like, you know, again, I live in New York City. I work on an airplane. I'm kind of used to confined spaces, especially like open air confined spaces. Um, uh, so we just kind of navigated the crowds. Again, people were wearing their masks. And I was very impressed with that. Um, then we hopped on the Harry Potter ride, you know, the forbidden, I think Harry Potter and the forbidden journey is what it's called. Uh, it's the big, it's the Hogwarts castle ride. Um, and as you can see, there's, uh, like in, in this photo, uh, the people who are in the car in, in the ride right behind Harry Potter flying on his broomstick in this photo, um, there's this bar that kind of comes down over your head. This raises... This, I, you know, I didn't stop to think about it until we got on the ride. Um, it raises an interesting question to me because you have this bar that comes down. And it's like this whole apparatus and your head is kind of like locked into this thing. What if people start coughing or sneezing and some of those germs get on the thing? Like, I understand that like every 10 cars or every 20 cars or whatever, however many go through, they wipe the cars down. Um... They wipe them down, they spray them down, they fog them down, they electrostatic spray them down, however it is that they clean them. They clean them periodically, they do. But they're not doing it in between every single person. And I, I, I feel like when you have a, a piece of apparatus close to your head, close to your face, I would like it to be a little bit more... I would like to be it a little bit more, you know, it's a great ride, um, in terms of having other people close to you to cough and scream in your face that you're going to catch their germs. This is not the kind of ride to worry about that. But if you are worried about like the head bar apparatus, maybe bring a little spray bottle of alcohol and spray down this top thing, or, you know, get a little extra hand sanitizer on your hands as they're putting it on before every single ride, wipe the thing down as you get in. Um, that's one thing that I think that they could improve upon a little bit. I was, uh, I was very impressed with how they were, how Universal Studios was, you know, um, cleaning and, you know, taking all that stuff in consideration. But again, with the pull down bar, you have this thing on either side of your head that I was a little uncomfortable with. So after the Harry Potter, uh, we went to, uh, have lunch over at the Burger Digs in the Jurassic Park area and, Again, I was very impressed with their new ordering system. They have an app. Uh, you have to download the Universal Studios app on your phone. Um, and then you bring up the... They have no paper menus. There's a, like, a little um, a QR code at the table. You scan the QR code. It brings the menu up. Oh, this is what I want. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and you place your order through the app. Somebody brings it to your table. Everything is, you know, it's kept. Yes, it's indoor dining. But again, everyone is spaced out. There's enough space there. Everything is spaced out. Um, I felt safe. I felt I felt fine um, eating at the Burger Digs. And, I, you know, I can only imagine whatever other uh, indoor restaurants that Universal Studios has in their property is it, it all goes along the same lines. You know, you're spaced out. Um uh, there's no refills. If you have a cup um, and you want to refill it, nope, not an option. Can't do it. Um, you get one drink uh, with, with like a $4 soda, however much it was. That's it. You just get the one. You There are no refills. Um, that I was impressed with. So you know, like, like I said, there's some things that I'm impressed with, some things I'm not. After the Burger Digs, we went to the Jurassic Park ride where you kind of like, uh, you know, Oh, look at here's a dinosaur. Welcome to the river adventure, right? And then you go inside the thing and then you drop down and brrr, big splash, whatever. This was the ride. Do you remember earlier I said uh, there was one ride where masks were optional? Well, we didn't know that until we got on the ride and it was, you know, it was too late to get off. Um, Kim and I were in the very front. Uh, we were front row. Um, we're in this boat. Uh, we sat down. The lap bar came down. Cool. Got all your belongings stowed. Awesome. Everybody's wearing their masks. And then you start down the river a little bit. And then somebody says, hey, guys, if you want to take your masks off, it's like for this ride, it's okay. You can take your masks off while you're on this ride. And I was like, um, no. Uh, can we can we veto that? Can we just say no? 
But, you know, by that point, it was too late. The damage has been done. And some of the people started taking their masks off. And if you're sitting in the front row and you have people, I mean, they weren't, there weren't people directly behind us. They were keeping, you know, they were spacing people out from uh, rows one, three, five, every odd numbered row they would fill per party. But even still, like people are behind you screaming. I was not okay with that. Keep your masks on. Um, so if you do go to Universal Studios, this is one ride that, uh, you know, if, if you feel okay with that situation, I disagree with you. But, you know, go ahead and ride the ride. I don't recommend it because this is one of those rides that masks were optional. Um, I just feel like masks should be mandatory for every single ride that I was that I was not okay with. Next, we went down to like the comic book land uh, area of Universal. We rode the Hulk coaster. Again, everything was fine. Everything was great. This was the this was the 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 line that we were standing in that people jumped in front of us, and I was like, uh, "Hang on, uh, no." Like I said, there's markers on the ground. You go from marker to marker to marker to keep that six feet social distance, not just in front and behind, but also left to right. And they did a really good job at that throughout all the rides. They did a really great job if people stick to the markers. Uh, yeah, so we did the Hulk ride. Um, again, same thing with the, you know, the bar that comes down. Your head is kind of like, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. If you feel safe, if you, feel com if you feel comfortable in a situation like that where you have a safety bar on either side of your head, you know, yes, you know, keeping you strapped in and everything, go for it. Um, I don't know. I had weird feelings about it. Uh, then we went over to the Kong, uh, Kong Skull Island ride. This, I was, I was particularly impressed with this particular ride. Yes, they filled every, and you can see the car that they use, like in the, in this promo photo. Yes, they filled every single row in the car, but there were huge sheets of plexiglass in between each row. So they could fill up every single row. The plexiglass, what none of us anticipated is that being that this is a 3D ride and you have video screens on either side of you, um, you know, for this experience and whatever, uh, the plexiglass in front of you and behind you and on, you know, essentially on either side of you reflects the image of, you know, the screen on either side of the car. So if you if you if you look left and you see King Kong over there. Also, you know, the plexiglass in front of you, because, you know, nothing is ever like uh, geometric shapes and whatever, blah, 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 of the reflection of King Kong and, and, the, uh, and the dinosaurs and they're fighting and they're fighting over here. You can see the reflection on the plexiglass in front of you and behind you, depending on which direction you're looking, right? Because it's kind of a 360 degree experience where the screens are so huge. You can see behind you, you can see in front of you, you can see on either side of you. Um... I was impressed with the safety protocols for this particular ride. I, I enjoyed it. I agreed with it. I thought it was great. I, yes, it's an indoor ride, but it's, they've, they figured out how to do this ride safely. And again, I, I was totally okay with that. Uh, Hagrid's motorbike adventure. This is, I think the newest ride at, uh, at Universal Studios. Uh, it's definitely the newest ride in the Harry Potter park land part. First of all, first of all, first of all, if you have not ridden this ride, you guys, this is an intense ride. Holy cow. This was fun. This was really good. This was this was a great ride. It's just a great ride. It's uh, it goes super fast. It does a lot of things that you don't expect. And also, like when you're holding the handlebars of the motorbike that you're sitting in, you really feel like you're in control. I I did. I felt like I was in control. You can see the bank coming. You lean into it. Um, this was great, you guys. It has a lot of surprises in, in the ride itself. And it was really cool. I thought it was a great ride. I loved it wholeheartedly. Yes. Um, again, the line. As long as everyone's sticking to the dots on the ground, not a problem. Everybody's keeping their masks on. Great. Um... Yeah, I again like it's an outdoor ride. It's it's kind of a it is a roller coaster. Um so I felt I felt totally fine. I felt totally safe on this ride. Everything was fine. Um yeah, so he, uh here's Kim and I were in the uh this is the Hogwarts uh express going back 
uh, to the other park, you can kind of see like we're we're in that box car, right? Um, wearing our masks, everything's fine, everything's safe. Um, then we went over to a uh, this is one of the shopping stores that they had. Also, um, Universal Studios has a couple of haunted houses set up. I don't necessarily recommend going through the haunted houses because there's no way to. Yes, they have the markers on the floor, but it's a haunted house, so it's dark, and you're not looking for the dot on the floor to see how much distance you should put in front between you and the person behind you or whatever. Um, I don't know. Kim and I just did not feel comfortable having spoken to a few of the people who worked there. I just, we both of us, we just didn't think that it was a, a safe idea, a good idea. Um, but we did go to uh, the Tribute Store, the Universal Studios Tribute Store, where they had um, some really cool Tim Burton um, memorabilia and uh, set designs like built from the original Beetlejuice, which is so cool. It was really, really cool. Um, but we, you know, we walk in the Tribute Store and this is, uh, it was more enclosed and tighter quarters than we had originally anticipated. It, the damage was done by the time we got inside. Um, we just kind of thought it was like social distanced and like open air. And we get inside and it was like, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Black Friday. It was like Target at Black Friday. And everybody was just buzzing inside. We're like, uh, you can't go back out that way from the way you came because there's people coming in. And so we just kind of got corralled in like all of these people. I did not feel, I did not feel okay in this store. I did not feel okay, but you know, we were there. So we had to, we had to keep on going. Um, next, um, you know, as we worked our way through, yeah, there was like a, you know, a couple of cool Beetlejuice things. Um, Beetlejuice lies here. Uh, they had like the snake head from Beetlejuice. And then just as you exit the store, um, they have, um, uh, oh shoot, the two main characters, Alec Baldwin and, uh, Gina Davis, uh, from the end of the film, just kind of like hanging there suspended in midair. So we, you know, took a photo and then we GTFO pretty much is what we did. Um, yeah. So, so like I said, that was pretty much our adventure at Universal Studios. Um, for the most part, I felt fine. I felt totally safe. Um, there were certain things in terms of social distancing. There were certain things in terms of like cleaning the rides in between each person and also the Jurassic Park ride, which is one of my favorite rides at Universal. Uh, masks were optional. That I did not, I was not okay with that. For the most part, everything else, if, if you want to go to Universal, if you want to have uh, an experience all your own, if you feel that you can do it safely, and if you feel comfortable with the safety of other people around you, go for it. Um, for me personally, I don't regret the experience. I don't. Um, I also don't think that this is the kind of thing that I am going to be doing again in the near future. Um, for me, it all came down to the social distancing um, and it all came down to the things that not just that people were touching because you have control of the things that you touch, but it's specifically the things that come down around your head area. Um, uh, again, like the things that people touch, everybody's getting hand sanitizer before they get on any ride, any ride period. So if you're touching the same safety bar, I generally kind of feel okay touching the same safety bar because A, everyone's hands have been sanitized just before they get on the ride. But B, I also carry my own bottle of spray alcohol. So if I am going to touch the same thing, as soon as we get off the ride, spray, spray, I'm good to go. But it's like that it kind of the more headgear type stuff that, you know, your head is going to jostle around and be fairly close to your face or head. Those were the things that I was like, man, I don't feel OK about this. I don't feel good about this anyway. So, yeah. So that was just um, our experience at Universal Studios. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you guys been to Universal Studios? Um or Disney or any other major theme park during the pandemic. How did you feel? Did you feel safe? Am I being a little too overly cautious here? Or um, am I underplaying it a little bit? Like where where do you think I'm at? I'm interested to see where you guys are at. Did this help you at all? Do you feel safe going back to a theme park? Or are you going to kind of be uh, may maybe more on my side and after having this experience and say, you know what? 
I'll give it a little bit more time. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. Anyway, guys, that does it for me. If you like this video, click like. If you really like this video, click subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, click share. Because that is exactly what Harry Potter would want you to do. All right, guys, uh, my name is Mike Brown. This is Gotta Love Them Movies, your daily dose of movie news. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. And until next time, have a wonderful evening.